Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up with the last layers. Here. And keep it light pressure again. Don't want to disturb those layers underneath. You know when that just the tip of your brush is touching the paper, that's when most of the paint comes out. I pick up little tidbits like that here and there. to it again. And now we're going to mix up the burnt umber, which is another earth tone that has a lot of orangey qualities to it. So I'm going to go ahead and include it on this page rather than the browns page, which is where I'm heading after I finish with this yellow and red phase and go to the yellows and browns phase. Oh, okay. Now, since it is so brown, it's going to be kind of different. This is going to be more orange and this is going to be darker. All along we've had lighter than darker. Well, this is darker than lighter. And we're going to need red, more red on both of those. And yes, those are different colors. Since I have listed the burnt sienna in with the yellows, even though it's an orange, I'm going to keep the darker one in this column. I just want to be consistent. Very rich tone here. Now somebody said one time, and it really stuck in my head, you know how we're always putting down color and it dries lighter and we know, oh, darn it, I'm going to have to go over that again. Well, this woman said, when it comes to wet and wet, scare yourself. I thought that was so great. And that was a little bit scary. Quite brilliant color. And it's really different from every other one on the page. Burnt sienna is a granulating pigment. Which means that there is a definite texture to it. But I'm not seeing a whole lot of that right at this light layer. And this is a good warm flesh tone too, but it's more medium, so I don't think that it fits in with number seven. I'll wait for it to dry before I make any comments on it. And now the reddish mix. Get enough paint on there, Laura. Oh. As you go along down the line and across the page, things will really change. As your pigments get more intense, less intense, lighter, darker. Now there does not look like a whole lot of difference between those two colors. There was with the Scarlet Lake. We've got a good difference here. This is really definitely um, toned down on a light, medium flesh tone. And this is 
old-fashioned roses or persimmons. Rose hips, I'm sorry, this was persimmons. Okay, yeah, that's dry. I think I'm gonna put that in with the medium flesh tongue, which is number three. It's another thing you wanna pay attention to when you're making your notes, is you've already got this list. Does something else fit in that list? Yes. And this does as well. But I think it's more of a peachy blush flesh tone, so I'm gonna call that six. And also, since I don't have a big color differential between these two colors, but I have a greater differential between this mix and the cadmium red, I'm gonna add a touch more cadmium red to this. And test that out on a piece of scrap. I did take, ooh, I like that. I did take a, a page out of the book, literally, to use the scrap paper. It's always a good idea to use the same paper. Get off of there. Dog here. Use the same paper um, that you're working on when you do your scrap tests. I work mostly on Arches 300 pound. You don't have to stretch it, it's very sturdy. I like to do float mounts. And it does really well with float mounts. It's a stiffer paper than the more common 140 pound. And 300 pound is not to be confused with, what is it, 330 grams, which is more like the 140 pound. That can get confusing between metric and standard measure. Ooh, I love this rich orange. One of the pigments that has the largest differential between manufacturers is burnt sienna. Don't ask me why. I don't know. But it's fascinating. I've seen people with five different brands of burnt sienna on a single palette. And uh, you can get all kinds of different mixed colors out of this one tube of paint. PR 101. That's a PR stands for pigment red, PY is pigment yellow, PV is pigment, pigment violet. I can't talk anymore.